Japanese galleries on the second floor of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. These are the usual galleries of, of Japanese art, but we have now converted them to this exhibition of the Tale of Genji. The story is a, like any master work of literature. When you uh, read it at a different time in your life, it seems completely new. It always seems like a wonder. A mere court lady could have written a 1,300-page book with 54 chapters and some 500 characters. And one of the most remarkable things about it is the way that it's written, how it really it has this uncanny way of feeling like a modern novel. There are some wonderful pieces from the Harvard Art Museums that haven't really been seen very much. We have a beautiful decorated book, A Prayer for Genji, which is this beautiful book from the 17th century, which is in a room where we talk about the relationship between Buddhism and the tale of Genji. There is a legend that Murasaki Shikibu wrote the tale of Genji at Ishiyamadera Temple on a moonlit night, looking out at the, its reflection on the waters of Lake Biwa. And ever since that legend came about, the temple has been an important site for worshipping Murasaki Shikibu. For the first time in the temple's history, it will be headed by a woman, Washio Ryuge and she agreed to officiate a Buddhist ceremony consecrating the space because these aren't just artworks, they are Buddhist sacred sculptures that have a life of their own that need to be cared for and venerated properly. Her ceremony is going to do that. Today we had not just a once in a lifetime, but sort of a once in an age opportunity to witness really um, an experience that's both uh, cosmopolitan and global and artistic, but also extremely Buddhist. We were lucky enough to have eight priests join Ryuge-san in celebrating this and consecrating the exhibit. There are numerous exhibitions about Genji in Japan, and we learned a lot from all of those and our colleagues' work in those previous exhibitions. But we wanted to share the full story in artworks outside of Japan as well. Harvard really opened up my eyes in the sense that in Japan when I was doing my training and when I was studying, it's very textual based and very ritual based. And the thing that really brings this together over time and space is actually artistic and literary works. It's what connects us to the people who encountered these amazing ideas, amazing places, amazing divinities.